Hi, my name is Martez Mott, and I'm happy to present our journal paper, A Virtual Reality Scene Taxonomy, Identifying and Designing Accessible Scene Viewing Techniques, on behalf of my co-authors, Rachel Franz and Sashi Nuzovic. Scenes of virtual reality environments are designed to resemble physical environments and, as a result, considerable effort goes into making them believable. For example, environments like Steam VR Home can evoke a comfortable cabin in the woods. While the VR game to climb can transport users to exciting locations that might be too dangerous to visit in person. The richness of scenes and their lack of physical constraints has resulted in the creation of various scene viewing techniques over the past few decades. These techniques include approaches like automatic camera control, which can provide guided tours through various virtual environments, and techniques like outside-in, which is a point-of-interest technique which makes out-of-view content visible to users. However, despite the abundance of scene viewing technique research, the question remains, how would a designer choose a scene viewing technique to implement? And more generally, how would a designer reason about scene viewing techniques given a particular scene? To facilitate the selection of appropriate scene viewing techniques, we devised a scene taxonomy derived from insights into cognitive psychology and computer vision on how people and computers define, view, and describe virtual and physical scenes. Our taxonomy has two dimensions, visual properties and tax types. Identifying the visual properties of a scene allows for more rigorous comparisons compared to categories-based descriptions, like describing a scene simply as a beach, or interaction-based descriptions, like this scene is walkable. We identify seven visual properties, openness, scale, area, object density, object tracking, scene transitions, and contain social actors. There's not enough time to describe each property in detail, but let's explore openness, which describes whether a scene is enclosed. At a high level, VR scenes might be outdoors, like a forest or a city center. Scenes can be indoors, like home or office environments. And finally, scenes can be abstract, where the environment is neither indoors nor outdoors. Since the way people interact in a scene is affected by their task, we identified eight task properties based on our review of VR applications. The eight task types are movement, socializing and collaboration, exploration, navigation, Offense, defense, creativity, observation, and productivity. Each task introduces interesting questions on how we should think about constructing scene viewing techniques based on the visual layout. For example, Meta Horizon Workrooms often places users in conference room like environments that are indoors and human scale. Comparatively, VR Chat allows users to socialize in a range of environments of various sizes, which might necessitate different kinds of scene viewing techniques. One of the potential uses of our taxonomy is for the classification of existing scene viewing techniques. This heat map shows an overview of scene viewing techniques in the research literature, which highlights gaps in our current research efforts. To get a better understanding of how we did the classification, let's use the world in miniature technique as an example. We can see that based on our taxonomy, Worlds in Miniature was developed for small or human scale indoor environments with low object density, no object tracking, infrequent scene transitions, and no social actors. Another use case of our taxonomy is as an ideation tool. We use the taxonomy to envision three new scene viewing techniques that could be helpful to people with limited head or trunk movement. VR systems often presume users can move their head and neck to view a scene, but that might be difficult or impossible for some people to perform. Thus, we need new scene viewing techniques to accommodate these users' needs. Our first technique is object of interest, where our goal was to design a technique that could help users maintain awareness of multiple moving objects. We designed object of interest for large outdoor spaces with moderate to high object density and multiple objects to track. In this example, the user is in an underwater environment and can press a button to bring up icons representing animals nearby. Then they can select the icon they want and their camera will automatically orient in that direction. Our second technique is proximic snapping, where users can more easily socialize with others by moving their avatars to socially appropriate distances from other users. We design proximic snappings to work in indoor spaces with social actors. In this example, a user presses a button that switches the camera to a third person zoomed out view of the environment, where the user can then see their avatar as well as the other avatars in the scene. The user can then pick up their avatar and place it on one of several drop zones near other avatars. Our last technique is rearview mirror, which we designed to account for the lack of techniques designed for offense defense tasks with frequent scene changes. We designed rearview mirror to work in indoor spaces with frequent scene transitions and one or multiple objects to track. 
In this example, the rear view mirror allows users to have more information about their environment and to allow them to easily rotate their camera by pressing a button as they try to eliminate spheres in the environment. We were interested to know how well the techniques we devised would perform when compared to panning the virtual camera with a joystick. So we recruited 16 participants and restricted their head movement by requiring them to place their chin on a chin rest as they interacted with the three techniques. For more details about our study methodology, please see our paper. From our study, we found that the techniques we created were useful to users while completing their various tasks. Participant 11 said, the object of interest technique would make it easy to find things in a super crowded place, especially if you have limited mobility. I didn't have to move much or work very hard to find it, just, oh, it's there. When discussing the benefits of proximic snapping, Participant 5 said, you get a perspective on everything in the space, and then you can decide and just go to where you want basically in one move, which I think was more efficient. And when describing their interactions with the rearview mirror, Participant 14 said, I like that there were just more visibility because you don't have as much peripheral vision. So it gives you more visibility behind you. I mean, you still don't have the peripheral, but more visibility. Although participants generally enjoyed the techniques we proposed, participants did not always prefer the technique they considered easier or more efficient due to other considerations. Let's take the object of interest technique as one example. Participants felt that the technique helped them be aware of their surroundings, which is good for spatial awareness, that it helped them identify objects that they were viewing, which is good for usability, and that it was easier to switch their view to an object compared to panning with a joystick, which is good for accessibility. However, the instant camera transition to the object was disorienting, which harmed spatial awareness, and the presence of the UI in the scene detracted from the realism of the environment, which can harm the overall user experience. There is way more detail and information in our paper, but we hope this video has provided a high-level overview of our scene taxonomy and how designers, developers, and researchers can use this taxonomy to classify existing techniques and to generate new ones. Thank you for watching and listening. Please read our paper to learn more.